There you go. 16 minutes I've just wasted doing a, uh, a video of starting this again because I was going to do today's video comparing editing a, a colour photo with a black and white and I, f I, shot, a f some, I shot this photo in the Lake District last year in um, quite harsh sun conditions, quite harsh daylight conditions uh, and a colour version of this just looks rubbish. So I've decided to not go down the colour route so hopefully this video won't be too long. So I'm going to edit this photo here in black and white and it just wouldn't work in colour. I mean, you can see how many photographs I took. Um, I was just waiting very patiently in the wings for the, the, the cloud just to disappear over the top of Great Gable, which is an amazing mountain, which is one I've had my eye on for ages that I want to climb. Uh, and as you can see, I, I almost took so many, it might as well be a time lapse. Uh, but the one that I'm going to edit is the raw file that I think looks the best with the most with the, with the best amount of light and um, story I guess you could say you know we can see the top of the hills we can see a nice little bit of light on the side of the um, of the v-shaped valley and we've got a lovely stream that's catching the light nicely so I'm going to edit this one so first and foremost let's get this little puppy into black and white now of course I'm editing solely in Lightroom which is where I spend most of my time when I'm editing. So my contrast is going up quite high straight away. Um, and I'm going to pull back on the exposure. So I didn't clip the highlights because if you look to the look at the histogram, if I pulled that all the way to the left, if I'd clipped my highlights, i.e. if I'd overexposed, I, um, I wouldn't be able to recover those bright bits. So was that down to me or my camera? I'm not sure. I'm just going to say it was down to me, of course, um, professional here. Um, but uh, I'm going to drag the exposure down a little bit uh, because the, the, the exposure is predominantly mid grey and it's quite a bright grey. So I'm going to actually pull it back to about minus 50, I think. I think that's where I want to be. So I'm going to do a couple of things straight away. I'm going to reduce the highlights because I want to see loads of detail in those clouds at the top. And I'm going to reduce the shadows because I want to increase the highlights. Now, a lot of editors will do that straight away and that will give you a, a HDR look, but that's not what we want to do with. Let's just say for the purposes of this video, this is a fine art photograph with fine art photograph. You're looking for subtlety and a lot of photo editors on, on YouTube and people who are massive on YouTube will promote dropping the highlights and opening up the shadows. And you don't always want to do that. So let's let's bring those shadows down a bit because, like I said, it was it's quite a highlight dominated photograph. Uh, and let's increase those whites until we see a couple of pixels pop in. There we go. And let's decrease the blacks until a couple of black pixels pop in. And then let's leave that there. So straight away, that's looking that's looking really nice. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pop up the texture to around about ten. Clarity is going to come up slightly as well, just to five or so. And let's just have a little play with the dehaze. So do we want, this is a question you've got to ask yourself when you're editing, do you want a clinical photograph where you can, re where those details literally stab you right in the gut? You know, you can see clouds, you can see the texture, you can see every single bit of detail in that photo. Or do you want a dehaze so you're really just touching on those details and you're really bringing out the subtle parts? I am actually for this photo going to edit a little bit further towards the right. So I'm going to add a little bit of dehaze, about 10 or so, just so we can see a bit more detail in the clouds. Um, so one thing I'm going to do now is just drag a grad filter down from the top, just so we can pick out the detail in those clouds, like I was saying. Let's drop the exposure and drop those highlights. And let's uh, put the clarity up slightly just so we can see a bit of detail in those in the tops of the of the mountain of Great Gable. Um, do we want to dehaze as well on that grad filter? No, I don't think we will. Yeah, let's do it slightly. Let's go up to 10. So we've got even more dehaze in a dehaze photo. Uh, right, now I'm going to drop in a grad filter from the bottom and let's just try and throw this uh, foreground out of focus, by the way. And the way we can do that is just reduce exposure slightly. And we'll just take the clarity out. So let's drop that right down. 
because I don't want the eye to settle on the foreground. I want it to land on the foreground and then slowly be taken through the photo, which is what we want. And they can take either route because all, all routes in this photograph through the stream lead to the very top, which is why I like it. So that's good. Okay, looking quite, quite tasty so far. Now we don't obviously need to worry about colour. Um, one thing I'm going to do as well is I'm going to just get the, a brush tool and I'm just going to colour in the, the, the V-shaped valley, the, the flanks that are in the shade. They actually look like they've got gills. They just remind me of some sort of breathing animal with gills, like, you know, it's got like like some sort of fish or... So the mountain is is, is breathing life. Got to sound like Mally Davis, don't I? How's it going, Mally, if you're watching? Sue Okay, so just those darker parts, I'm just going to make those even darker. And I'm just going to pick up the blacks, reduce those blacks, just again. Again, for me, two things I need in this photo. The attention to go to the top of the mountain and the contrast in that stream to get you there. So I'm going to just pick up a little bit of clarity in those V-shaped valleys. Colour in that side of the mountain a bit more which I think looks pretty sexy now. That looks really cool. Uh, right, so what else have we got? I'll tell you what we could do is a little leak of light coming in from the top left-hand corner. Just like that. Just like that. Sound like Tommy, Tommy, uh, Tommy Cooper. Uh, yeah, so let's just... We've got a little bit of heavenly light, a bit of angelic light coming in from that top corner. And the last thing I'm going to do, that I, the only thing I think needs doing now, is I'm just going to draw a brush on um, on the stream. So let's zoom into a, let's change that to 100%. In fact, let's go, let's go, can we go even less than that? 66% so we can see the whole stream. No, we're gonna have to do it. We're gonna have to fit that in, okay. Okay, so ignore that, what I was saying. Now what I'm gonna do is gonna get a brush, I'm just gonna draw along this stream, holding the command button and just try and follow that line as well as I can. So I'm going to take the opportunity while I'm doing this just to say that Great Gable is on my mountain climbing list. Oh, I'm messing this up. So by holding the Alt button, I think it's Alt, yeah, I can just delete anything that any anywhere I've coloured over the lines and I can start that bit again. So I'm adding Great Gable to the list of mountains that I want to climb for my 35 and 35 challenge. If that doesn't make any sense to you, then look at yesterday's video and that should explain a bit more. I've got 29 mountains to climb before September. Even without a global pandemic, that would not be easy. But I'm not going to let you guys down. I'm not going to let myself down. I'm going to make sure that I get it done. And one day I'm going to be stood on the top of Great Gable and you guys who are watching this, you and me, we're going to remember the day when I said, I'm going to be stood on top of the mountain one day. So when I do, that wave to camera will, will be for you. I promise you that. So there we go. So we've drawn over the stream. So let's just pick up the exposure there. Increase that contrast, even though it's very white. So let's... Bring up the highlights, if that works, that doesn't really do much. Whites, will that make a difference? Yep. Good. Okay, now I'm, I'm actually going to drop the blacks even more on this photograph, because I just think it would look even more imposing. Um, and then I'm just going to add a vignette, and then we're done. In fact, I'm going to just make that exposure go a little bit brighter, actually. Forget what I said about dropping it to minus 50. There we go. That looks pretty tasty, I think. Minus 25. Um, anything else that we could do? Uh, why don't we just maybe just play with the tone curve? So let's just raise that just to flatten out. Make those shadows a little bit more matted. And let's just have a sexy S curve here. Very subtle S curve. There we go. Am I happy with that? Let's press full screen. Let's press F. Any last things, any last 
issues uh, or things that I want to change. What I will do, I'm going to draw. I'm going to draw the brush over the top of Great Gable, just to really highlight where the uh, top of the mountain kisses the sky. Quite literally, look at that. It's a real sexy moment that is between the mountain and the sky. Look at that. Very, very sensual. Oh God, I sound like Mally again. Let's drop that exposure down. I'll just come a little bit further with my edit. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I'm really pleased with that. I think that looks... No, I've overcooked it. I've overcooked it. This is the thing with me. I'm never, ever happy. It's too much, isn't it? It's too much. And you guys would have only told me that it's too much. What I'm going to do is colour in that crag there. And that bit on the right. Yeah, I think that's kind of nice. So I haven't cropped this image at all. So it's still, it's still you know, it's um, I've not even rotated it. So I haven't really lost any pixels there at all. So that image would be quite a nice image to be printed. There we go, 4480 by 6720. Taken on the ESR, ESR with my Sigma 70 to 200. Ladies and gentlemen, great gable as seen from the back of Haystacks in the Lake District. I hope you like, oops, see Daisy, I hope you like that photo. I'm actually a big fan of that. I'm tempted to get that printed. I think that looks kind of nice. I might even make a couple of tweaks um, because an artist's work is never done. I'm just going to colour in the, the bright parts and make them slightly darker. Uh, yeah, I think that looks nice. That looks really cool. Okay. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, I don't know how long I've been chatting. Good job I didn't do the colour version as well because this video would have been about three days long. So thanks for watching this video. I will see you on the next video, whatever that's going to be about. Hope you're taking it easy. See you soon. Since I've seen the sun.